All right, welcome back, grade 10s. I hope you had a fantastic long weekend. We are going to jump right back into our physics coach here. So the last lesson that we discussed was kind of an introduction into how to calculate the velocity uh, of an object using its distance that it has traveled, dividing it by its time that it took for it to make, travel that distance. Now, where does this relationship come from? Is uh, we actually didn't really talk about that. And today we're gonna get a little bit more into that and then we'll go a little bit farther. Uh, it actually comes from the graphical uh, relationship between the two of them. So we will, I am going to be honest, this is one of those lessons uh, that can be very tricky at first if you haven't ever heard of something called the slope of a line on a graph. Um, if you have, then that will definitely help. Uh, but uh, we're just going to try our best. Um, that's all we can really do right now. So we're just going to try our best and hopefully you can follow along with it. If you can't, uh, you know what? It's uh, it's all good. We'll we'll just try to understand it as best as we can. Okay. So uh, let's get started. How do we go about graphing velocity, uh, velocity time, and distance time graphs? Just making sure that I'm actually presenting the right page. Yeah. Okay. So. It can be difficult to make sense of a table full of numbers that show you all the distances and all the times that an object has, uh, all the distances that it's traveled and all the times that it took to travel those distances. Now, however, if you plot these numbers on a graph, instead of just looking at the table, you can all of a sudden start to see all the information at once in a very visual way. Velocity graphs, they're called distance time graphs, okay? So if you're using displacement, that's fine. You just replace the word distance with displacement. Remember that the difference between distance and displacement is that the distance is the total amount of distance traveled, whereas the displacement is this change in your initial to your final position. So you could drive forward 50 meters, and then you could throw it in reverse and drive backwards 20 meters. Well your displacement would only be 30, right? Because you went 50 and then you actually only, you went backwards 20, so you ended up, here I'll draw it out while I'm talking, you ended up only 30 away. So there, maybe you went 50 initially. Oh, there we go, that's, that's a five. Okay, and then you turned around and you went backwards 20. Well, What's that dis what's that difference between the initial and the final position? It's going to be 50 minus 20, which is 30, right? Now, what if I asked you what your total distance was that you traveled? What if I wanted to know your total distance there? Well, then you would take 50 and you would just add 20, right? So your total distance is 70, but your displacement is 30. So what I'm trying to show you there is that there's actually quite a big difference between displacement and distance. Now, when you draw these graphs, a couple things I need you to remember. Time is always plotted on the x-axis. Now, x-axis, you'll get better at remembering this, but it's always the horizontal one. So it's always the one that runs along the bottom. That was potentially my worst ever attempt in the horizontal line. But you get the idea. So that's x-axis, okay? That's uh, that's time. So that means that distance or displacement is plotted along the vertical like that. So this would be the distance and this would be the time. The line of best fit then, I'll show you what it is after, but if I had a whole bunch of points, kind of, can you see those? Yeah, you can see them. If I had a whole bunch of points like this, like I'm not gonna ask you to, to connect the dots of all of these. You don't have to connect the dots. You just need to draw something that's called a line of best fit. And it just shows you the kind of average tendency that the points are following on the graph. So notice we've got a title. The title always needs to provide two pieces of information whenever we're graphing um, like physics graphs and physics. And these identify the object that's being, the object that's being studied. In this case, it's a lawnmower. Because why wouldn't we talk about lawnmowers? It's extremely exciting. 
And then it also has to identify the variables that are being measured. So in this case, we're, we're measuring the, the distance versus the time, okay? So that's a really good title. I want you to have titles like that when we make them, okay? And then you've got your two axes showing the following pieces of information. They show the units, right? So not only does it show time, it shows it's measuring time on the x-axis, but it also shows that it's measuring time in seconds. And the same goes for the distance. The distance is on the y-axis, but then it shows not only are we measuring distance, we're measuring distance in um, meters. Okay, so um, the x-axis shows something that we call the independent variable. The independent variable is the variable which is purposely changed in an investigation, like we have control over the independent variable. Say, for example, I was trying to time in our investigation, right? We were doing like a lab. I was trying to time how long it took for all of you to run 20 yards, or let's say 20 meters, okay? Really short, it's like a little, a little sprint. Well, the independent variable there would be, um, sorry, I'm gonna, I'm gonna flip my, my example here because I don't wanna confuse you. Um, let's say I wanted to know how far you could run in 20 seconds, okay? Then your independent variable is on the x-axis and it's time because I have controlled it. I decided that it was 20 seconds. Then what's gonna change? Well, how far you've traveled, right? That's the one that's actually dependent on how fast you ran, right? Uh, how, you know, how good your reaction time was to when I told you to go, all these other variables, okay? And that changes the, the dependent variable, and that's the distance that you were able to travel. So that's the variable that is measured as it changes in response to the independent variable. Okay, so if I'm looking at the example that I just had on the last page, independent variable is time. Um, and then in the other one, the dependent variable would be the distance that the lawnmower traveled during each of those time intervals. Maybe the grass is really long, so it's a little bit slower. Maybe the grass is not long, and you can go quick. Now this line here, this vertical, or sorry, this uh, diagonal line, this is the line that shows the slope. And the slope of the line shows that the lawnmower was moving at a constant velocity because every two seconds it's moving two meters. Another two seconds passes, another two meters. Another two seconds passes, another two meters. So that's always, there's this constant relationship that doesn't change, okay? Now, that means technically you'll get better at realizing this but if i go two meters two seconds or two meters in every two seconds that means i'm going one meter per second right now what happens if we have some stuff like this these look a little bit different now the graph on the left shows a straight line so this is the one over here it shows a straight line and uh what that means again is at a constant velocity but what we'll notice here is that every second oops every second oh i can draw here uh the hockey puck is traveling five meters so it's going five meters per second another two seconds passes or another pe second passes we go another five meters another second passes we've got another five meters so now it's going five meters per second whereas the long was only going one meter per second. the hockey puck's traveling faster and then you've got this weird one looking here which has a jagged line it's not straight what this means is that the velocity of the object is changing over time. Initially here, think about like when we were talking about exponential growth in terms of populations of animals, right? It's an acceleration, it's getting faster, it's getting faster and faster. And then here, kind of in that limiting factor type area where it's starting to slow down, okay? So this has got a, a, a less steep slope. If I was to extrapolate this line like this, this slope is a lot less steep than this one, right? So this one, indicates a faster movement than this one does. You can use distance time graphs to determine the velocity of objects. What you need to do is calculate how steep the line is. Remember that I just told you, right? That hockey puck had a steeper line, which meant that it was going faster than the lawnmower. Well, that's exactly what we're doing. Mathematically, we call that the slope. It's the slope formula. It's the formula that tells us the steepness of a line and the steeper the line is, the faster the object is moving. Let's take a look at a couple of different examples that we could see. Right here, fast. 
steady speed, right? Not changing straight diagonal line at a high slope, right? It's a steep curve or it's a steep line. This right here, this is an object that is getting faster. We call that accelerating, okay? Um, and then right here, you've got a steady speed. And then right here, what's going on? See, I've got like three, four, five, six, seven seconds. Well, each time a second is passing, what's happening to my distance traveled? Let's call that three, I don't know. It's staying the same, right? It's actually not changing. So right here, this is an object that is not moving. Every second that's passing, I'm staying in the same position. And then if this is where I started and I'm moving back towards that same position, that's the zero meter mark. Well, that means that I'm returning back to the start. So you can see graphs like this on distance time graphs as well. You can see lines like this. So let's let's actually talk about how you're supposed to find a slope. This is the last thing that we're going to do. Choose two points on the line. Identify and record the coordinates of those two points. You can choose whatever two points you want. I would always suggest, if you can, use the point zero, zero, right? That's this point right here. That's this point right down here. Use that. Make your life easier. So. For example, mark the number on the y-axis, mark the number on the x-axis for each point, and then write down what those points are. Then you have to find out the rise. This is the distance interval between the two points on the y-axis. It's the ones on the y-axis. I always say the rise is the change in your y's, okay? And then the run is the change in your x's. It doesn't uh rhyme it's not as nice to be able to remember it that way but if you already know what rise is then you know what run is run is just the other one so that's the distance between the two x-axis points and so to find the velocity then you divide the results of step two by the results of step three so i'm going to do the rise that's what we call slope because it's called the rise over the run you divide those two so let's take a look at it in an example choose two points so what i've chosen here is the point two two so right here it's at uh, um, a distance of two meters and a second interval or seconds of uh, the time is two seconds and then i chose this point four four which is uh it looks like it's like a little bit off but it's close enough so four four is at four meters and four seconds what i do i calculate the rise remember the rise is the change in the y's so i take my y two variable sorry my y2 point and i subtract my y1 point now some of you that don't have any experience with how to graph and how to plot points might be confused by what i've done here this is just the proper way to say that i've got a point at two two you always go x first and then y so that to me if i saw that without looking at this graph i would know that i had a point right here at an X position of two and a Y position of two. And the same goes for the one up here at Y, or at four. I had an, an X position of four and a Y position of four. So I take my second Y point, which is the one that's higher up, and I subtract, in this case it's higher up, it can be lower down, but we'll get there. And I subtract my initial Y point, which is two. So four minus two gives me a rise of two. Now let's do the run. The run is, fortunately for us, the exact same points, right? It's four minus two, whereas the other one was these ones, right? So four minus two, that gives us a run of two. And then the last thing, it's on your formula sheets. You can actually open up your formula sheets right now and look at it. You'll see on there is slope is equal to rise over run. Rise over run. The rise over run is two divided by two which just gives us a, a pretty standard answer of just one meter per second. Now, here's the thing. Where did I get the idea that slope is the same thing as velocity? Well, if I'm looking at my rise, my rise is my, my meters, my distance in meters, right? And my run is my time in seconds. And then what did I do? I divided them. So I did meters per second that's the same thing as velocity meters per second okay 
So slope is the same thing as velocity. I'm going to say you can try to do these on your own if you want. I'm going to wait until the next lesson to go through them with you, and then we'll move on. Uh, try them out. There's not really any, I, I'm going to be okay with whatever you do. You can even follow on the next slide. So you can pause right now and try it if you want. If you're not feeling comfortable, you can just take a look at the next slide here and see if that'll help you out a little bit. So I have just found some points here. I kind of thought that this looked like it was at 3.6, and this one was at 6, and this one was at 100, and this one was at, I didn't think it was quite at 350. I thought it was at like 340. So there's my points, and then I just do my run and my rise, or my rise and my run, and then I do rise divided by run. So try that out on your own. And then you can pause. I'm going to move on to the next one. This is another example, exact same kind of idea. Now, what you're going to notice is if, if you chose points that were just a little bit different than me, then uh, your answer is going to be slightly different, right? Uh, like I only chose these points because I, I initially got this off of uh, Miss York, and these are the points that she chose. So that's just the answer that I go with now when I teach it in my class. Uh, but if you went with four and 100 and six and 350, that's fine. Your answer might be a little bit different, but it's going to be very similar. So then here we go. Now we're doing a go-kart. So we're, we're calculating the, the, the distance time graph for a go-kart, and we're going to find a slope again. I just took two random points. Now, if I was going to give you a hint, I would say don't do as I did here. I would take this point right here at zero, zero. So then you end up just subtracting by zeros instead of subtracting by ones and fifteens. Uh, it makes your life a little bit easier. You can pause again, try that one out. Again, same thing, all I did was I took my two points, I did my y2 minus my y1, my x2 minus my x1, and then I divided my y2 minus y1 divided by my x2 minus x1, and I got 14.3 meters. That was definitely a long enough lesson though, on as it is, so uh, we're gonna leave it there. If you are completely lost on some of that stuff, that's fine, it's our first time learning about it. There are some <clears throat> extra practice on what we can do together to get you a little bit more familiar with it. So let's end it there. Have a good rest of your day, and I will talk to you tomorrow.